Yeah. Mind you, I should guess I should put my new my new self portrait up. Hang one second. <laughs> my my three D printer. And... So I've been working on. Uh, I I I did the actual um, sculpture in on the iPad. Okay. Yeah, and then so basically, I took a there was a drawing course on on how to sculpt a human head using the <laughs> software. So I did that and it spent me like a month, and and there you go, there's the finished product. Um, I can recognize it from here. I can really <laughs> see like skulls and nose, but it def definitely does have a fedora. Here I can do the. Uh, I'll do this instead of. I'll do this as a talking oh, nice. head instead oh, of. Oh, nice! You know, yeah. <laughs> oh it does look pretty awesome yeah it's, 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 it's cool it's like uh like on the um just for the uh for the sake of the audience i'll show you my ipad so i've got um it's called uh nomad sculpt i've been talking about it on the on the podcast for weeks there's the right the oh, wow. in uh 3d so, <laughs> and then um hey, yeah. i'm gonna figure out how to turn this there so and then as you as you you can turn the object with your hand of course i can't because i'm touching the wrong part of the screen there we go so ah. here let me do it this way <laughs> like that then it can mm -hmm. move it around and you know as you you can build it up and break it down and Huh? I mean, the iPad is the iPad is so powerful, like it can do these things easily, right? Like yeah, it's just yeah. crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, this is the well, and this is a this is well, this is an M as Apple, Apple Silicon chip, but it's not the M1. It's the one previous one, the Pro from yeah 2010, 2020, I guess. So it's pretty pretty recent stuff. But it's yeah, I love the pencil. You know, this new pencil is I like it much better than the old one. I never lose it because it's stuck to the side of the the ipad <laughs> the other one i used to lose it all the time right so <laughs> yeah so it's cool stuff all right well so hey everybody welcome to another episode of the morning just code podcast my name is tim and i am in toronto ontario and i'm joined a overjoyed to be joined once again by Marin Tardov, who is currently in Berlin. Well, he's been in Berlin for a number of years now, right? Well, yeah, actually, um, we're living close by, you know, uh, I think after some years in the city, uh, we were a little fed up with it. So now we live like out in the, out in the nature, we're surrounded by lakes and forests and so forth. Oh, you're in the it's country, about, as we say. Yeah, it's about like 30 minutes out of the city. Cool. So it's like a rural kind of what we call rural, where it's like side roads and not off, off no, the highway kind of thing, you know? It's like here, yeah, kind of like it, it's it's still a town per se, but like it's uh it's like very it's like spread around and everywhere is surrounded by like forests and mm -hmm. it lays on a big river and uh, which like flows into like few lakes and so on. So um, yeah. It's 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 easy to like be ten minutes and and, and 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 on a beach or you know, whenever there's sun. I mean, like I'm not saying that there's a lot of sun in here, <laughs> but whenever there's sun, like you can do somewhere in ten minutes. So, yeah, somewhere I, nice. I think it's yeah. Germany. You're just you just will like it, right? Yeah, that, that's it. Just <laughs> like no it or choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, and so, you know, uh, you're back on the, uh, the Ray Wenderlich team writing books. So, I mean, you never, I guess you never really left, but, uh, but, uh, your latest exploit is, uh, you're back on the combine, 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 uh, trail. Uh, kind of, kind of, but not really like we've, we've, we've just released an update to the combine book, um, which is the hours 15 macros. 12 um update uh there's a few new things uh, in there that are related mostly to interoperation with the sync await um but um i think what i'm what i'm more excited about is working on a new book which is the uh the new swift concurrency book uh, and it covers like a sync await task groups tasks the new actor model and so forth so 
I really I find it really fascinating. Um, I I started like because okay, let me jump like. like I, I, well, I mean, back. maybe maybe <laughs> maybe I'll throw a bit of context to to I think the the community is wondering. You know, with the release of Async Await, they were wondering what is happening with Combine and, and how it works with, you know, UIKit and SwiftUI and so on and so forth. So if you, maybe if you could cover some of those right. aspects. Right. So, so um, you know, Combine is the... Um, is the uh, is, is Apple's reactive framework, so to say. Like, it's, it's, it's similar to other reactive frameworks out there like Arc Swift, um, reactive Coco and so forth. Um, and, um, you know, this, this covers like, a um, like well-defined set of, of asynchronous tasks, um, that you can like put together, uh, and like build like this, uh, quite complex, uh, honestly, um, Asynchronous workflows that uh, you know have a lot of inputs that come together, be, be processed in a safe manner, and then like um, you know being being uh, acted upon and so forth and so forth. So it's like a it's like a very complex um, thing that you can do like very very powerful things with. Um, but underneath, like it's it's it, it was still based on like grassroots sort of dispatch and so forth. So so the the new Swift concurrency model. Um, addresses like this part. It's like a it's like a little lower level than combine itself, um, because you know when so when Swift launched, you, if you remember well, like Swift one in in in, in San Francisco. Were we together at this at this WWDC? I think so I, because I was with Ray, I was with Cesare. Um, yeah, you know, twenty twenty. I was at WWDC for twenty fourteen for the announcement. Um, really? Yeah, I don't know where. Had yeah. many many walks oh, in San Francisco <laughs> over the years, and, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so, so when 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 Swift came out, like it had it had like a nice and powerful asynchronous library, which was Grantsol Dispatch, right? Like from day yes. one, there was yeah. like, you could do easily stuff, but like Grantsol Dispatch was designed or 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 like it was well suited for Objective C, yeah. Um, and it's basically a, a, a C interface that has been translated to Swift. So it wasn't really proprietary, so to say it wasn't really special. So, so even, so even like the, even the, uh, was it, was it the, the, uh, NS operation is, was the sort of baby of kind of central dispatch, the sort of adding, adding a UI on top of it, right. Or concept of a UI, not, not right, a user so, interface, but like a, a re- easily accessible abstraction. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, kind of. They, they, so they, they all like all of these asynchronous libraries, they just use the, the P thread C library, which powers like everything, um, in there. And then like, they're just different abstractions over it to make it like easier and easier to, uh, to, to, to create threads and do concurrent work and so forth. Yeah. But like, they all had the same shortcoming, which is, um, specific, specifically about NS operation, uh, and the thread API. Like you had to create a thread, manage it yourself, then right. merge it into the main thread and so forth. So like, this is a lot of manual work and like grand self dispatch was okay. Now we just have like this one function that like spawns a new thread and you can organize them in queues. Uh, and that's pretty much it. But, uh, this kind of like was not optimal because of what we experienced, like thread explosions. There was like, it was difficult to manage the amount of threads that are being created and so forth. So it was like super automatic, but in the way it turned out, like it's not very, it's not enough. It's not fine grained enough to, to like do exactly what you wanted. And so the new Swift concurrency APIs are trying to solve like is most. This, this is this async await specifically or yeah. combine in general? No, async await. Like combine is just just an abstraction over over GCD, right? Like it's just, yeah, okay, oh okay. And, right. and so the new stuff is is trying to replace GCD, like to oh. to move move the the old the old um, asynchronous like foundation, so to say. Yeah, and, like have a new one that um, that does things instead of GCD. And so the new, the new model is, is, uh, it, it doesn't create threads. So the, the biggest, the biggest difference is, is that it doesn't try to create threads 
on demand as GCD used to do. Right. Um, and then, you know, organize blocks on the thread into the queues that you had to manage. Um, so the new model has something called the, the uh, a, a cooperative thread pool mm -hmm. in which it will create threads automatically for you completely transparently. And then it will manage this pool um, to have up to uh, the basically the maximum amount of, of threads for your system. So you will never have more threads than cores and therefore mm -hmm. you will never have to switch between threads. You know, it just, it, it kind of like works if, if, I, if I need to like very simplified example, like imagine the, uh, the uh, UI table view, you know, how you pre-create like preheat like as many cells in the, in the table view as can fit on screen. And then you just like replace them real quickly Oh, whenever you're scroll. scrolling. Yeah, the recycle, yeah, so, re re reusable view or whatever it is, yeah. Exactly. So so like it kind of like works the same way. Like you have this pool of kind of like created threads and then you just, as you need more tasks to run concurrently, you reuse these existing threads in the pool uh, to run your tasks. So you don't, you, you don't never have to create threads and things like this, which is kind of like slow yeah. and expensive. It's funny, um, it's funny. The part I I forget is that you know you can only have as many um, threads as you have cores. Now is that CPU cores or or like in, in the case of I'm thinking you know with this new M1 Pro and M1 Max that just got rolled out, you know you can you can f configure with you know any number of I think you have ten and twelve cores in the two chi two main chips and then you have so many GPUs. So is it this is just CPU cores? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so, um, so, I mean, you can have as many threads as you want. The problem right. is you can only um, run that many at a time. Yeah. Right. So, and so, and, and so switching between the threads is, is, is apparently what takes like most of the time. So if you have like a whole bunch of concurrent things that are running and you have to mm -hmm. switch all the time, this potentially can slow down your, your app, like considerably. Um, and so from what I understand from WWDC and from what I've seen in instruments, um, the new model, like this is one of the big things that it does is that uh, it completely manages the threads for you in a way that uh, you don't need to do switching between threads. They just have the threads there. They're, they're uh, ready to go basically. And so you just add um, basically function calls on these threads that execute like parts of work for you. Um, mm -hmm. And so every time you say await this or await that, that's a, um, that's a, it's called a suspension point. And like this allows the, the, basically the, the, the neural brain of the whole thing to like swap tasks between threads and like decides which tasks should run next and so forth and so forth. Um, I can't say that I like completely understood the whole thing, <laughs> even though like I've been looking into this like exclusively this almost whole summer. Yeah. But uh, I did a lot of like um, basically experiments and in instruments. And from what I've seen, like this is, this is what, what the system does. Uh, basically decide, okay, this app gets this many threads, this app gets this many threads and so forth and so forth. Um, mm. and, it, and it looks like it, it works pretty neatly, uh, I must say. Um, I think the, at the point of usage is, is extremely simple. Um, if you're designing APIs that are highly concurrent, it's not so super simple, mm -hmm. but like I like the separation. Like if you're designing a highly concurrent API, naturally you have to understand how this whole thing works mm -hmm. so, or you better understand <laughs> this whole thing works. Right. Um, and like, if you don't really need to understand how holding works, you can still use them like completely and obliviously like oh, of what's happening um, at a point of usage. Right. But like, Stop me whenever you feel like it's too much because I am. Oh, no, no, this, this is right this now. Is, and this I is, this is uh, trust me, uh, I, I know from the conversations I follow online and, and my own, you know, confusion about it. Uh, I mean, I it, here's an example like, for instance, when I'm interviewing people, and this is a 
pro tip for anybody who gets interviewed by me is I will get around to asking you what the difference between NS operations and GCD is. And, and I want to see who understands which came first, which is the chicken, which is the egg, you know, or, or what have you. And, and you've actually told me more, to, I've learned more from you in the last five minutes than, than, you know, I do myself. And then, and that's after, after writing and reading, you know, stuff for Ray for all these many years. Right. Um, yeah. It, it sounds to me like if I can just put a, try and put an analogy around it, it's, it's, and I think I did say this in one of our podcast titles, it, it sounds like the, the arc for, uh, threads like async await. Like it sounds like it, like you said, I didn't realize it's a different, different sort of sort of rewrite or a rethink of Grand Central Dispatch. But, and I remember when Grand Central Dispatch came out on, on um, iOS anyway, Leopard, I think, or tig Tiger, Leopard, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, had to, I had to go, I had to go to the store and buy the, the, the DVD, like in, in like in, a physical copy to like install it on my Mac to do iPhone. Back in the day, you mean back in the day? Or? <laughs> yeah, oh, back yeah? in the day. Wow. <laughs> huh. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I cut I cut you through. Um, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> It's okay. Um, yeah, because this is, you know, I, as I also go on tangents too, so it's. I think we're both equally guilty of that. But what I was going was was it's. Um, I just remember what the title was that I, I, I said. I even tweeted it out and got a f- little bit of responses from it. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to look at my, maybe look it up on the website because we did talk about it on the show, obviously when it came out. Um, and I'm sure that people are yelling at their phone saying it was this episode, but. Um, <laughs> for that episode <laughs> let me go to the site here um anyway yeah so it's it sounds like it's it's because i mean to me it sounded like to me someone uh, you know i don't work with threads all the time right i work with them you know as i need them um you know i'm one of these people who constantly blows up my app because i forget to bring a thread that's you know updating the ui to the front and to the main thread you know kind of thing and that sounds to me like it sounds to me like there's a bit of a promise there that um, with async await, that kind of, you know, f- forgetting to do that is, is going to go away because it's kind of an automatic pool, if you will. Right. Like you said, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, w- I would say that, um, you know, that, that, that uh, now that Swift is in, is in it's, it's, um, what is it? Seven iteration or so, uh, I can't really, yeah. Well, I think 2014. So, so... Yeah, we're it's 21, uh, yeah, right. That's five point so something now. Yeah, it's it's five point yeah. five now. Um, uh, yeah. So whatever. It's, it's it's. I think Apple has had enough years of experience and input on Swift development mm-hmm. to know the kind of problems that people have with it um, yeah. in in concurrent context. So this API design is trying to address concrete problems that have been appearing again and again and again. Um, and, and I think that, um, uh, at least a few of them are solved pretty, pretty solidly. There's, there's things that I'm still discovering that I'm just like in awe, um, in awe about them. Yeah. Hmm. Um, just an example, like for something, but you said, um, specifically about this, you can, you can annotate, you can annotate types or functions um, or properties mm-hmm. um, with an actor, and then uh, an actor is kind of like an um, an actor is a type which is powered by an executor, and it's similar to what dispatch queues used to be. So it just executes serially um, code in a context. And so, but regardless of this, you can say, "Hey, this whole type, any function, and any property in this type." Uh, let it run on the main thread from whatever it's being called. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if if the type has many properties or many functions, you can say, hey, these three properties, um, an array of something and maybe a dictionary of something else and so forth, these things are driving my UI. So I I want these three things to be updated on the main thread. And then Mm -hmm. you just like add an annotation at main actor, before oh, the okay. declaration. Yeah, I was going to ask if and you then, could name them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So if you put at main actor in front of this function and this function and maybe this property, um, these things are automatically being routed on the on the main thread for you anytime you call them from anywhere. So, you know, 
things like this, you know, they pre-solve problems that you will have at a point, um, in a way. So that, do you, that do you need just... to name them that, or will it automatically, will it sort of help you or make a suggestion that perhaps you should do this? Um, the main, well, act, main actor kind of thing. <laughs> so far, what I've seen is, uh, that I will have, or at least this has happened like a bunch of times to me so far, uh, is that I will have a model and then I will have like a list of some JSON objects that I'm fetching from network. And then these things I'm showing them in Swift UI list on screen. And then everything in my views is driven by Swift UI. So this is automatically being run on the main thread, mm, but like okay. my model is not automatically being run on the main thread because, you know, network calls and so forth and so forth. And then when I'm running the app, um, I usually have um, the checkbox that says, um, I don't know what is being called, uh, main thread checker, main thread something. Oh, thread, yeah, thread checker or whatever. Yeah, that new thing they added, the Xcode thing. It, yeah, there is a there is a checkbox in your in your schema. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. That, yeah, it, that tells it's you if you're trying to update the UI. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll put it and in the so, fact, we'll put it in the fact check notes. <laughs> okay. So, so I'll run my app and then, and then Xcode shows me this purple warning, which is not a compile. Yes, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. It just shows you the purple one and says, Hey, you updated this property and this went to the main thread from a background thread. So, uh, you know, it's, it's wrong. And so, so you're say, running okay, a thread so, analyzer at this point, right? No, it's, it's not a thread analyzer. Um, if I just quickly spawn Xcode, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. So because if, sure. if people are listening, they'll be like, I know what it is. Yeah, or if, or if they don't know, and, if yeah. they don't know, they'll be like, what is it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, or if you tell me, uh, I'd open Xcode yeah. right now, but it messes with my recording. So. Um, yeah, mine is running extremely slow because of. of, of so if I go to edit scheme in my run. Um, configuration and options no in diagnostics okay in some diagnostics so in diagnostics yeah yeah it is king run diagnostics there is a runtime api checking oh. and there is a checkbox called main thread checker main thread checker okay cool yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and this is by default checked so when you try to update the ui from from somewhere from another thread than the main thread you get this purple warnings um, and so I will see a purple warning and say, okay, so this property is driving my UI in my views. Uh, right. I, I want to safeify this one property where I store the array of, of models, for example. And so, and so I'll put like at main actor on this property uh, specifically in my, in my model type. Yeah. And so, you know, other functions or whatever can be on background threads, can do whatever they want. But as soon as I update this one property, the update will be routed on the on the main thread and that will safely drive my UI in my views. Right. And so, for, you know, for, things like this, just automating things uh, for your yeah. sanity. Cool. And, and for those uh, developers who are driving at home right now, the, the, um, the, you generally write your, your model and your data types and your data network calls in a, in an actual real Swift file, not necessarily a Swift UI file, right? Like are you, are you using sort of an MVVM model in your your coding these days? Yeah, yeah. I, I usually, uh, you know, when I started doing reactive programming some years ago, I went into MVVM and that I really liked it. And mm. so with Swift UI, I usually just have the views and another type, which is an observable object, uh, yeah, to, right. to fit well with my views. Um, and so since the model does networking and other things sometimes, uh, you know, code ends up elsewhere in the main thread. So is that from your time at Realm where you were talking about that kind of Yeah, experience? I think, I think so. I think 2000. I remember you did a talk at 360i dev on, on, I think you did a reactive <laughs> book for Ray as well, right? So yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I did okay. start with Arc Swift, yeah. um, combine came out, um, and then now we have a sync await. So I, I feel like things are things are improving at a, at a at a at a cadence that I that I really I like it. Mm -hmm. Although I can imagine that I think for people that are just starting, it might be like too quickly. <laughs> you know, yeah, if, well. if somebody just started like in 2016 with Arc Swift, like 
the next year that can combine now it comes to sink away. So it might be a little bit overwhelming, I, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that's sort of the nature of, of being a developer is like, you know, I've been around since 2010 on um, iOS and, you know, so I've seen, I remember memory, ma manual memory management. In fact, I, I tell people, I still have apps on the store that have manual memory. I never went back and rewrote them for Arc, right? You know, why? I mean, it works, right? But I mean, but the thing is, the thing about it is, is that like, you know, the question, the question I have out of, out of what you just said is, is, is it, do you think it's important for people to understand the, the history of this stuff? Uh, you know, how you and I are both, you know, have an art background. So we know the value of art history and looking at why they put the paint on the painting this way. But I mean, is it important for people to have, to understand the history of uh, how, you know, we had GCD, we had NS operations, we went to combine, you know, because people are people, I, I see threads on, on, on Twitter saying, oh, combine's gone, right? Which I don't think it is, right? And no, I don't, you know, because obviously, I mean, you don't, either, no. yeah, but I mean, an async await is sort of the future, but you know, Apple does this a lot. They, they take a problem we have, they create a tool for us in, in a framework or something that does something we all, we don't know we need to do until we need to do it, you know, um, and they, they roll it out. And if it, then it's super sexy, they'll put it on stage at WWDC, you know, and, and especially in the platform, the state of union, um, yeah, platform state of the union call a talk. Right. So, cause this, this year was async await. In fact, like I found my note on WWDC and I, and I basically said, it's like arc for threading. And so is what I, what the title of the show was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a very neat, that's a very neat, uh, that's a very neat thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. But, Cause I mean, I, I ask, you know, the young, young, younglings who come to me for job interviews, you know, I'll ask them if they understand how memory management works in iOS. Right. Um, and they're like, yeah, you just, arc does it for you. You don't worry about it. I'm like, well, you do worry about it. <laughs> You know, uh, and the older developers I talk to always know, they know the history of, of, you know, retain and release and, you know, the alloc and all those things we used to have to do back in the old days. But that, that's what I mean. Like, so the question is, do you think it's necessary for people to understand the path that you and I have been on in order to, to appreciate or understand things like async await or just revel in the fact that they don't have to worry about the problems we did? Uh, to be honest, I'm not so sure uh, what to tell you here because yeah. I've been reflecting on this a lot, in, especially in the last, I don't know, half a year or so. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm every day on Twitter and, and I read a lot about what people say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't really generalize what people say, of course. But I'm like, I've noticed that uh, every now and again, there's, again and again uh somebody who's saying hey like i i never i never had the need to write a binary tree or um i never had the need to i don't know sort of, or i don't know, um, you know yeah it, the whole, stuff, the, the, yeah, yeah. The, the linked list nonsense stuff like that the, exactly the stuff exactly. i was kind of like i you know i dread getting that in an interview myself you know Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, and so, and, and I think this is, I think it's a fair thing to say, like people that are, that are like a few years in the industry have never needed to do this because yeah. they worked on problems that don't really require this, of course. So, you know, like for them, it might feel unnecessary to know how to write a linked list uh, or a double linked list or, you know, any of this uh, data structures um, because, like Swift is such a nice language that like it offers, I think it offers like the base for free um, in, in a way that you never have to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and like it does this wonderful memory management uh, uh, copy on write and so forth. So like you never really hit, hit um, like a bottleneck in performance when you usually start thinking about these like custom data structures that you might need to use to like gain back a performance that uh, that you lost basically for using the only the basics and so forth so and i think that they're right in their like in, like they're right in their own use case and in, in their own um environment and so if somebody can do for years as an iOS developer without ever needing to write a linked list, I think they're right. 
I need to link list like all the time. I've done this like I've done I, I do this again and again and again. And and because I'm I'm I I have the feeling that I'm just solving different problems. But like of course, like I'm 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 right for myself. And so I'm not so sure if if I should be telling somebody that they need to 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 know about like link lists and, and, mm-hmm. and sorting trees and so forth, because we have different use cases. And right. so and so given that, I think that well maybe it's not necessary to know about memory management. Um and and I think that as soon as you kind of like feel the need to know about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, then then you'll learn about it, and 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 then you will know it, and and so forth. So, um, so that's true. Sure I mean, what, that's a lot of a lot of think? the like. I'm a self-taught iOS developer, and and the um, you, 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 I basically learned things as I needed to learn them. I mean, I had the benefit of working with Ray because then we had access to all the cool stuff that you know the other team members write, and you get to just go and play with it, and yeah you know, forget it 10 minutes later, but still, you know, like I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I started working on the combine book and then that you just, the update you just did. I don't think I ever really looked at the previous one. Um, and then, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I think I got like through halfway through the first chapter and I haven't, I, I looked at it again this week, but I haven't really gone back and dug in again, you know, but I will sometime, but like I said, I do remember quite vividly your talk at, uh, at 360. And then of course, you know, the work you were doing at realm, cause I went to the, uh, the open house in, in, um, San Francisco, you know? Okay. You were in SF. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mark, Mark but and I went was that, that, was that, the, was that the, the, the one with, uh, what was it? Um, the famous some... cigarette exploding. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. The battery in the, in the yeah, cheap, yeah. cheap knockoff e-cigarette blew up in the, and we all almost died of cancer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No offense realm people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, it was, that was a pretty interesting evening. It was actually right behind my, my, uh, behind me. It was a lady, a lady was sitting behind me and Mark and, and her, her purse, literally the bottom started flaming. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It was, and then it was just, you know, smoke bomb. Right. I, I, yeah, at this time, I I would have I would have bet on on the Galaxy Seven. Was it the one that they? <laughs> it was around you know, that time, actually. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. time you went on a plane, they would say, "Hey, if you have this and this device." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got on a flight. I got on a flight once where they they said if you have any kind of iPhone or get or Samsung, song, and I'm like, uh, and no, iPhone doesn't blow up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. yeah. they made us turn our phones off in on the plane, like not shut them, not turn off Wi-Fi. They made us turn the hmm. phone off. Okay, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, at, at who, who are you going to call anyway? And you're in, you know five thousand feet in the air. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. unless you want to watch Star Wars or something. Um, right. Yeah, cool. So, I, look, so did you? I'm curious about the uh, the how, what you think about the Apple Silicon stuff. I mean, especially since we just this just this week we got the finally got yeah. the promised uh, next generation uh, next iteration for the for the pro pro users, right? Right. Um, yeah. What do, what do you think about all that stuff? I think it's amazing. I think it's like I have no objections whatsoever. I, I think this right. is. Uh, it, it feels like such a huge leap forward for Apple um, computers uh, devices. Rather, uh, it's it's just super crazy. Uh, I, I I worked with a with a with a with a MacBook Pro with an M1. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for over a year or so, and like switching back to my 15 inch Intel right now, it just feels subpar. Um, <laughs> it's I, I'm, I, I got so used to like for the machine to never make any sounds. <laughs> then oh, now, yeah. like, it really bothers no fan. me. Yeah. No fan. No, yeah. yeah this, I never yeah. had it. I, the, the only ever time that it turned the fans on and I'm serious. I thought it doesn't have any fans, you know, because oh, it was really? 13. Yeah, because the it was 13, thirteen inch does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and so, I, but I thought like it's the small one; it doesn't have fence. That's why it never makes any sounds. But like one time, I forgot it, like in the sun, um, mm. and then after a while, it started. I turned on the fence, um, ah. and it was like really like summer, summer time, and so forth. So, and then like it was the first time I was really startled. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, 
what is it <laughs> yeah 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 no well, yeah, i had a, i had the dtk on my desk the, the mac mini dt okay. developer toolkit that they came up with yeah. last year and i had it sitting on my desk and every now and then i would feel this heat wave i'm like because it had a fan on the back um, okay. but, but I have, I have the MacBook air and yeah, it, it doesn't have fans and it never, it gets a little warm when it's charging, but it never gets hot. Not like my Intel's my Intel, oh. you know, used to burn my leg. They were so hot. Right. Yeah. Um, every, every now and again, it would do that. Yeah. So I, I'm curious though, like from like, are you personally in the market for a new computer? Would you think what were you thinking about it? Cause you said you have a 2015 now, right? So uh no more well, touch this bar one, <laughs> but yeah yeah so I, I think this one is um so i had a bunch of bunch of laptops but uh mm -hmm. right now i'm down to one and this one is a 2018 oh okay right right so and this was like top of the line so i think it's still like a viable computer um but uh i think that i'm gonna just wait a few months see how 2021 wraps up financially. Uh, mm -hmm. If things are looking good, uh, I'm definitely right. going to get one of the new machines uh, for sure. Yeah. Did, any idea which one you would get? Would you go with a 16 or because you were going for a 15? I think I need to go to the store and like see how big they are. Uh, mm. Well, I can tell you, I, I've had a, I had a 16 and a 15 in my hand because I do a lot of the setups for, for the, the company I work for. And, um, oh. so I, I actually had one of the first, one of the first guys who got a 16 had to come to my porch and we had to do the onboarding on, cause he had to connect to our company network. Right. Um, and because, you know, I was one of the few people who sort of figured it out, but so I put the 15 and the, and the 16 on top of each other. And it's just, it's just marginally like maybe an eighth of an inch larger all around. It's because the bezel is moved back. You get it. The, mm. the footprint of the computer is very relatively the same as the 20, as the 2018 you're looking at now, mm -hmm. but it's just a slightly larger screen, you know? Uh, so for all intents and purposes, it looks the same. And I, I suspect the 14 is very similar. In fact, my, my, uh, I have a, uh, 2013, um, MacBook air. My wife uses upstairs. It's much bigger than both of my <laughs> pro 13 and my new MacBook air M one. Yeah. So like, I mean, from a footprint point of view, and again, it's another half an inch all the way all around if you put them on top of each other. So, so I think even though it's a 14 inch or 16 inch, it's, it's probably physically the same size as what you have now. Okay. Give or take it, a little bit of, uh, I must say that I'm uh, that I'm really undecided. Like the the 13 <laughs> inch is just the, the 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 form factor is simply amazing, and I just yeah. love like holding it, and, like carrying carrying it around in the apartment, and so forth. It just like I just yeah. love it. Um, yeah. However, um, I'm, I'm I'm now playing with again with like Mac OS, and they're like for development. So you just need a little more space on screen so yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so i think i think it's going to be the 16 uh when i come around to uh to getting new one yeah cool yeah yeah we we talked about it on the show just uh, which we just came out on the weekend and um actually yesterday in fact um yeah i'm a i'm always going to be a smaller mac guy so i i'm, I'm gonna if i get one it'll give you a 14 but I recently put when Monterey shipped on Monday, Monterey are the, the release uh, candidate. I put it on my M1 Air and it's super nice. I didn't run the beta on it, but, uh, and I bought it for the purpose of, you know, I got my daytime Mac, which is to Intel. And then I've got my, my not so much daytime Mac, but neither one of them are my daytime Mac. Cause like you, I'm doing most of my work on a corporate Mac. Uh, that, you know, so, so I don't really, I don't need a Mac per se at this point in time, because I, yeah. my company supplies me with one. Right. So, but Hey, actually regarding your note in there, I'm actually an employee right now. Like I'm on, I'm on a break. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're, you're I doing mean, the, you're yeah. doing the what, what do we call that? Um, I may had a term for it where you, where you don't, uh, well, it's a not term. a sabbatical per se. Yeah, no, he had he had a developer <laughs> term for like uh, not like happily unemployed, happily you know like a fun employment. Fun employment. That's oh, the okay. one. Yeah, you're fun employed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, like, yeah, writing a book is 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 is. I mean, it's not really un being unemployed. No, it's quite employment. a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, but like it's something that I'm doing like on my own here. Um, 
of course, with the larger team at, at rarebundling.com. But uh, I mean, it's just sitting at home and banging. Is, is it an eight hour day for you? Like, do you, do you have that kind of discipline or you just chisel away at it when you feel like when the baby goes to sleep? Um, well, first, she's not a baby anymore. And it's really, yeah. it's a bit weird. That if you feed them. <laughs> <be honest. growing. laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, um, yeah. I think at, 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 a, at a point where I was actively writing, that was a, it's, it's pretty much an eight hour day. Huh. Um, but right now we're, I think, done. Uh, we, we are just running the last round of edits on the last chapter. Um, and so I think the book should be out. Within so is this a, is this a, is this an exclusive you know spilling the beans what's coming from Ray kind of deal or or do people know <laughs> has it been announced that this book is coming or um, I think it's 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 clear that it's coming in the beginning of next month hmm. um, and and we've been open to like working through the last rounds of edits uh, and I've been posting on Twitter about it. Um, nice. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 quite soon, and we're gonna just put it out as soon as we can. Uh, we don't have any issues currently. Uh, we're just one after another, just checking off tasks, um, final edits, um, cool. bios, things like this. Yeah. I can't await to sink in. <laughs> 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 great, great one. <laughs> sorry great one. yeah oh, great one. yeah it just came to me so yeah you were really excited too about uh the, this conversation we're having today because you mentioned that um you were happy about the fact that uh, doxy has been open sourced right right yeah yeah this was um this was great this was this was a very fantastic thing to happen to me uh so to say, but like, um, right. So to give a little bit more context, of course. So at WWDC, Apple announced um, Doxy in Xcode, which is a system working within Xcode where you can you know, write your package, framework library, um, add comments and add additional documentation content, um, and then just click uh, build documentation in the mm -hmm. build menu. In the product menu, um, and then that kind of like grabs all the comments, all the links, all the content, uh, all your articles or interactive tools and so forth, and like compiles the documentation, and you can see it in the documentation viewer, just like any other framework from Apple. Um, and that gives you, you know, quick help. Um, you know, basically your own documentation behaves. As, as any framework in the uh, in the built-in docs. Yeah, no, um, I know that I know that um, our team has looked at that in the past, where you know you you can add comments to it just before Doxy came out. You could add comments to your, I think, with the three forward slashes or three slashes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Back, uh, they're not backslashes; they're just slashes, right? Yeah. Unix. <laughs> People call them backslash, but there is no backslash. It's a forward slash, a backslash. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, I don't know if it's one of those two, we'll, we'll fact check that too. But, um, you put that in and then you put a comment in and and that would sort of populate the quick help in the pre previous to Doxy coming up. But so is this specifically for like a Swift package, like Swift package manager package kind of thing, or is this part of any, any Swift, uh, doc, any Swift app you've, you've written? Um, I don't think it currently works for like, iOS apps per se. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't think so. I have. But if you, but if you were right, if you were it. if you were writing like an API, like imagine you're at a company like Realm or something, and you had a Swift package like that. People yeah, could exactly. Hook and so, like they could put it into their app, and they could take advantage of of your API to connect to whatever you're helping them do. That's the documentation piece that's going to get written by Doxy, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm I'm not completely sure what's the difference in there, but like if you see, like if you opened uh, the README of of Doxy, uh, and there's described like how the whole thing works. Um, basically, the Swift compiler produces a thing called the symbol graph, mm -hmm. which is which is a graph that describes um, like the 
the hierarchy of your of your module basically it takes the Swift compiler takes a module and then describes it completely all your types all your functions and properties they're like in this tree like structure mm -hmm. um, and then the compiler also extracts like all of the documentation comments and like um, that bakes them into that graph mm -hmm. and then what the boxy does is take this graph um, mix it up with any additional content that you have uh, written yourself and then like produce this documentation structure that you can then see see as, as, as pages in the doc viewer basically and it's very similar um, to the kind of documentation structure you see from apple today like like those yeah, sort of nice yeah. looking formatted web pages right yeah yeah if you if you as i, as I say if you if you open the readme of, of doxy the, the first paragraph says to see docs in action, open developer.apple.com slash documentation. So um, Doxy actually produces that documentation as well. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. It was, it was, they're dog fooding their own app, right? Now they're, yeah. they're putting it out there. Exactly. So, yeah. What's it, so, but are you excited about the fact that it's been open source now, that, that now the community can contribute to it? Is that. I am, I am, I am. So, so there, so there is a few related projects. Um, Swift Doxy, uh, which is the compiler. There's the Swift Doxy render, which is the the view part of it. Basically, what you what you see, what, what actually renders things on screen and in the browser. Uh, there's the Swift Markdown package, which is Apple's own Markdown parser um, package. There's the Swift Symbol Kit um, package that helps you work with the symbol graphs that the compiler produces. So all of these are, are related and all of these are used by Doxy. Uh, and I, and I kind of like contributed to all of them. Um, and first of all, seeing that work go out there and be available for everyone is, is really exciting because um, um, I know like a lot of work went into them and they're, well tested, they're like well designed, well thought through. So um, mm -hmm. it's really exciting that these are available for people to use. But also, it's exciting for me because um, I also got um, co-author credit, so to say. So I'm a contributor in the repos, and I'm like in the first commit in the uh, in the repos. Oh, well. cool! Yeah. Um, so, like personally for me, like this is a, a um, feather in your cap. Yeah. A, yeah, exactly. That I never kind of like dreamed uh, of previously. Uh, so this is pretty cool. You know, yeah. like most people work in Apple for a really long time. And like you never know what they did. Um, but like things just turn out like this way <laughs> that, uh, that I can say, hey, by the way, here's the repo and here's the, uh, you know, Here's Here's my credit. And that's going to be there as long as GitHub is a thing, right? Kind of deal, right? Yeah, it's the first commit. Like, I, I mean, I better bookmark them because I know that like <laughs> going back through the uh, repo history, <laughs> especially mm. the web interface is not very efficient, but uh, yeah. I wonder if, I wonder if uh, the internet archive, you know, the, the, the Wayback mm -hmm. Machine, I wonder if it archives GitHub pages. I know it does for websites, but because uh, GitHub's kind of a dynamically generated environment right i think so yeah um i wouldn't know i don't know yeah. well it's be something yeah definitely take a screenshot that's what that's what i would do <laughs> at the very least right yeah yeah i mean the, the one or two times <laughs> that i had sh uh, apps featured on the app store i made sure i took screenshots so i've got them for mm. posterity you know in yeah, their low yeah. resolution format so uh, as i was telling you at the beginning here uh, just like um uh, roundabout creative chaos i'm stealing this idea of asking random questions okay. um and unlike tammy i've actually gone back to marcel proust which is the source for this thing to find the questions he used to ask so if you're seated comfortably you look like you are we can start asking you some of these uh some of these questions all right let's go let's go right. so the first one first one is what is your motto a motto yeah all right. Um, are, are you supposed to all like to have one like instantly available? 
<laughs> well, it, it depends on, I guess it depends on whether you've actually gone down that route to sort of think about what is, what is the door purpose, mm. you know, in, in how you see yourself contributing to the world and the life. And I mean, you're a dad and you're all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, I did an entrepreneurial course once and, and uh, my, uh, what we call unique ability was uh, I like to, to create and provide um, thoughtful uh, solutions for people to help them embrace change. Okay. I see. So that's kind of my motto. Wow. Okay. I also, um, I also like to say I put buttons on iPhones when people oh. ask me what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that they can understand, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not so sure. I don't think I'm prepared to uh, like on this one. It's as you said, like, I'm, I'm recently a dad and a lot of things have changed like, you know, in a big way for me. So I kind of like, I think right now I'm like a little lost. Yeah. I don't have like this clear direction where I go with like, with like all my force. Um, I think right now I'm just, especially after wrapping up my work at Apple. Um, yeah. I think I'm just like relaxing right now. Um, and I'm not quite sure like what, okay. what the victor is. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. How about this one? Uh, who are your heroes in real life? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, this, yeah, this is something that I'm kind of like more, more prepared to talk about. Okay. <laughs> um, so I know this is maybe a little corny, but like, I think one of my like, bright examples is actually Ray Van Lip. Like, mm. I think he's like, I think he's fantastic. We've been friends for a long time. Uh, we've been like visiting each other and so forth and so forth. But like, I think is, I can't, I can't say that I know like everything that's happening is in his head. Like, I don't think anyone, maybe Vicky knows only, but like, regardless, mm. um, I think like at the same point we were just starting on like iPhone development and we've like both had blogs and so forth. And I think at the point, like we had probably about the same amount of people like reading our blogs and so forth, but like he had such a clear vision of like where he wanted to be at a point that he like just kept growing and growing, and growing like, and now 10 years later, yeah. um, he has this, like an amazing business that has vision, it has readership, that has changed like countless amounts of lives and so forth and so forth. Of course, so yeah, yeah. I think he's like he's one of these examples that I'm like in completely in awe. I can't do what he's doing, but like he's really um I, I wish there was like more people like that that create like businesses that create real value um yeah. for such a big amount of people. Well, ultimately, he's the reason you and I are even talking today because we, you know, you were you were one of the first uh, writers on on the blog, which people may not know. Uh, you talked about that at three hundred and sixty, or you talked about that at the first RW DevCon. I think you did the keynote there, right? I don't know if that's uh, online anywhere, but um, yeah, that uh, that's pretty cool. And then, you know, yeah, I think for me, it was it was the same sort of thing. I mean, I came into iOS development in a cloud. Uh, I had a task to do, a job to perform, and uh, I stumbled across this blog by this guy named Ray, <laughs> you know, and uh, started, I remember, I remember how primitive it looked in the day compared to where it is today, you know, and I go, I, I must go there once or twice a week just to see what's, what's going on, you know, like what's new and what's shiny and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So definitely he's, he's uh, definitely, a, a, I've been a, a key in both of our, our professional careers anyway and i think part of that is it sets the tone for the great community that ios developers are in right you i hear this all the time from other people that you know it's the greatest environment to be in because we're we're all respectful and helpful and of each other right yeah yeah i think that um it it because i don't think that many people know but like the the website is like all the contributors or most of the contributors are like people who just do this part-time mm -hmm. just like have a proper full-time job or, um, you know, they're like their own thing, but like every now and again, they'll just jump in 
write something with like a bunch of other people that will help him around, like with editors and, and tech editor and so forth and so forth. Uh, and so like, it's this shared experience that you're continuously part of, like without completely overtaking your life. So it's, it's very, it's like both open and flexible and uh, it, it encourages uh, contributing cooperation. So, um, and like, this really is basically, it all stems from like the way, like the raid started it, you know, like mm. it's, it's, I think it's just, yeah. Um, I'm probably too much into the, the whole thing, but um, yeah. I really feel like uh, uh, it's just, it's been very special, um, special thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and just as a, as, as a, a parting thought on that point, we should we should uh, mention that you know if you're out there and you are knowledgeable, and you don't have to be an expert, if you're knowledgeable about Flutter or Android or iOS or Mac OS, definitely just reach out to the team. We're always looking for people to contribute and help, either as a, as a writer or or tech editor kind of thing, right? So. And you know who knows this may this may be a part of your new career. Like it's helped me and Marin both in our professional and you know spiritual careers, I guess. Right. All right. I, I, I'm guessing everybody on the team. Yeah. This is. Uh... Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We're. I mean, yeah. And there's a huge community of us. You know that that continue to to this day to uh, to collaborate on either just on Twitter or as some direct messages. You know, there's always someone on the team you can reach out to. Which I that's the part I love about the whole community at Ray Wonder Lake. Cool. Um, I have two questions here. I don't know which one to go to. I'm going to go with this one. Who are your favorite writers? Uh, aye, aye. Okay. I assume, um, I assume you read books and things and movies. I, um, in all honesty, uh, I don't read as much, uh, but I've been on um, Audible since about 2013 or so mm -hmm. and like and that like audible has the subscription plan which you get like uh a credits uh which is basically each credit it's a book and so forth mm -hmm. so since 2013 i've been i think listening to at least one book every month um and this this is, has been like quite a quite the quite the adventure um mm -hmm. to be honest because it allows you to both experience books and not um, not, um, like build up this massive amount of paper at home. Where, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have boxes. Um, have boxes are most of them are books. Yeah, books behind me, and yeah, yeah, right. And I've been moving quite often, like every every few years. So uh, this like really is not an option for me. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, um, like one of my favorite authors is Stephen King. Mm. Yeah, this is um, surprisingly so because when I was like when I was a teenager, I really liked his like early stuff about vampires and, and witches and things like this. They were like rereading right now. They they really seem very primitive in like both writing style and plots and you know it's, they're they're just very basic. They're mostly. Um, basically scare scare tales mm. um but like at a and, and at this time when when he became famous he was doing a lot of drugs uh abusing oh, yeah. alcohol and so forth mm. yeah so you can see like how it, it just like the quality also diminishes in this, <laughs> in like in the 90s or so mm -hmm. um but yeah but like so so currently he's writing like very strong prose and so his new things like post 2010, let's say, um, I really enjoy them. Um, there's, there's one book in particular about the Kennedy assassination mm. in which somebody from present time goes back in time to the sixties to try to, um, investigate, um, who was it and so forth and so forth. It's very interesting, very well written. Um, so, I read a bunch of these books right now, or listened to. They're really cool. yeah. No, I, I think listening to audiobooks counts as reading. You know? Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. I would you're imagine. you're in the same headspace. I mean, you just the difference. I mean, like I, since my eyes have yeah. been diminishing over the years, I find it less enjoyable to read because of the, of the task, right? But oh yeah. So I switched to audiobooks, and I can walk my dog and listen to an audiobook at the same time. So yeah, I'm the same way. I've let my my uh, subscription go. I don't I don't read 
uh, I'm doing air quotes. I don't read <laughs> audio books as, as often as, uh, as I used to, but, uh, yeah, so I, and I've haven't, haven't missed not having the subscription, but yeah, you're right. Audible is a great service. Yeah. I actually, yeah. through my Toronto library, I can get down, I can download audio books, which is what I've switched to. The only difference is like, you know, with Audible, you can get the book today but with the, with the yeah. library, they have, they're allowed to have so many digital copies in circulation. So you have to wait, okay. you put yourself on a waiting list and then, you know, you get, oh, the Obama book okay. is ready or, yeah, I'm actually rereading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance right now through an audio book. So it's been, okay, I read that in, in university and, and I'm coming back to it. <laughs> still, still very relevant book. Uh, cool. Um, what is your most treasured possession? Okay. Um, this is a fun thing because um, actually I've, I've, I've been on a happy hour with Ray Wendlick and then some of the team. I think, oh, they stole my month. question, did they? <laughs> and, and there was a question like this. We were, oh. we, we were together um, on this one, I think. Oh, okay, maybe. Um, or, I know, I'm thinking about I was happy hour. There, there we, we met in one of the breakout rooms. Mm. Um, and yeah, and so regardless, um, I think currently, um, I don't own it per se. <laughs> <laughs> but it is in my possession. So, oh, okay. Um, right. So I I started doing calligraphy about two years ago. Oh, yes. Um, I saw your stuff on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's really exciting because uh, I've been going to a studio here uh, where there is um, uh, an artist. She was she studied in Japan um, fine arts. And so she can do pretty much everything you can imagine, including pottery, um, calligraphy, um, painting on silk, um, you know, watercolors. But I mean, she can just grab anything that is in the room and like just do something beautiful. <laughs> um, and so I was doing pottery with her for a while, this Japanese kind of like style of pottery. And then like I got a little bit tired after a year or so. Uh, and I was like, you can do everything, like show me something else. And I, well, okay, maybe we can try the calligraphy. And so um, after I really started like going crazy about it because it's so great for my headspace, um, she gave me her book from the uh, Academy of Arts in Japan that she had it, but she studied back then. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very fine book in which each chapter is a, it's its own separate little book. So, you know, it's like, it's so precious that when you want to read something, you just open it up. It's like, it's, it's just like a little box. So you like open it up, take out the chapter you want, which is its own separate little book, and like leave the rest in the cabinet so that it doesn't get like print, like fingerprints and things like this. Um, and also like each of these little chapters was like, it's, so the chapters, they're just full of characters, you know, like they're, um, by the, like the highly, highly recognized, um, masters of calligraphy in Japan, like each of them, like has this, this like different style in, in its own chapter. So you look at them and like try to figure them out, like reproduce them and so forth. And like, I was, Hey, why is this like every page? Why it's like made out of like two sheets of paper? I'm like what's 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 with this like is it like the japanese style or something she's like no these are hand bound so these are like printouts on a press that are just folded in the middle and like then bound in the like in a book <laughs> that's why so they're like it's super precious this is like something that i'm completely in love with to like have in my hands and so so this is but it's in your teacher's possession right now or no, no, this is here with me because oh, okay. um, I, th I think at a point, um, it, as she said, like... Oh, that's what you mean it, by you don't own it. It's not something... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's on loan I to you? I have the textbook with me, yeah. Uh, as long as there's no other um, students that are that are willing to start with calligraphy at the same time with her. Sure. Uh, okay, cool. Keep that for a while, yeah. But like as she said, like everybody just starts and then give up, so... Um, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do, uh, or to like get started with. So there's some of these questions that are, are, we sort of already covered, but so what do you consider to be your greatest achievement? Um, my greatest achievement. Well, I think that I've been, 
at least an okay dad so far. <laughs> it is not easy. I mean, no, uh, no, it's just it's, you, it's you only almost, have one one child right now. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Um, but like I was, I was talking to somebody like last week. Um, actually, Sandra, the editor on on the Swift Concurrency book, I was telling it right. Like so for our professional life and for our like academic life or whatever, like we prepare like for years and years, like you go to 12 years of school, then you get like to another six years of college and then you get like into like internships, whatever. And then like after 25 years of preparation, like you start working or so like with kids is just, you know, catch and now do <laughs> yeah there's no there's, it's it's you're thrown into the lake and you have to learn to swim exactly yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty much it um, and all those things all those fears you had of, of bodily fluids or you know oh. you know you're you're you have to put all that aside like you don't it doesn't they don't care like what what your uh, your hang-ups are right <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so I think that you know that like this. I think this is one of the things that I've that I've been doing good so far. Um, I mean, so far, so far so good. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, All right, yeah. Moving on, what's uh, where would you like most like to live? Um, Besides Berlin. Funny story. I already lived where 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 I would most likely. <laughs> I think I think like the time that I spent in Barcelona was uh, um, mm. kind of like I, I really felt like home there. Uh, I really could connect to the people that I that I've met there. Um, it's been like um, I think climate wise and and like very many things were were precisely as I as I wanted them to be. So I really feel like this this was like the uh, the place for me, and I, and I was really happy there. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed Barcelona. We went, my wife and I went there for, to, we were doing a pitch for the Olympics back in 91, I think, right? Mm, yeah, so yeah. we spent a week in Barcelona and got to see Sacra Familia and have enjoyed oh, yeah. the, the dinner and, and meet, you know, meet some. I, unfortunately, like I should smack myself in the head because I didn't go see any Picasso museums when I was there, you know. A Picasso Museum. Yeah, oh. there's a bunch of yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in in there. Oh. Um, mind you, I did get to see the. I did go. We went. Up, we went. We landed on the plane. We were exhausted. I said to my wife, "I want to see Sacra yeah. Familia," and we started walking from the hotel. It should be just down this road. Like looking at the map, right? We didn't have <laughs> we didn't have an iPhone at the time to say find a cab. <laughs> yeah, the, the street know. goes for like ten yeah. kilometers this way. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And so we found, and and then uh, it, it's funny, it took us like maybe an hour and a half to walk to the place. We spent like maybe an hour in front of it, just walking around and looking at it. And it was still under, obviously still under construction. I think it's still under construction today, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then we they have, they have a we, plan. Yeah, they have we a plan a, for another 90 years or so. Uh, really? Wow. Yeah. 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 It used to be the way they used to build cathedrals. It used to take almost, uh, you know, many generations to build them, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's really, really crazy when you consider they throw up a building in, you know, downtown like now in like a year, right? Yeah. But Or faster, right? <laughs> crazy, yeah. Um, all right. So and here's some really weird questions, just some simple, simple ones. Um, uh, flat or sparkling water? Oh, um, I think I'd go with sparkling. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, this is probably one of the very few ways that I've been Germanized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is there any reason why? Is it like, is it just because the bottled water is cleaner or something, or just you like the flavor? And I don't know. I think it like, it like, I like it because, um, you know, oftentimes you just feel like, I think we have this, 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 um, what is it called? Like a Pavlov's, um, Pavlov's mm. reaction yeah. to like sparkling means soda and soda means sugar. Oh, okay. um, right. Right. And so, and I, and I found that like drinking sparkling water gives me a little bit of that feeling. So I don't really drink sodas, um, yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Um, all right. What, what is the scariest animal? Scariest animal? Um, it's weird. It's a weird question. Um, I don't know. Um, 
I think I've been very, very startled by like these very hairy spiders, if you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> there's like this, like, what is it called? Like, like tarantula? In Peppa Pig, in Peppa Pig, like there's like Mr. Skinny Legs and so on. It's like just oh. one little ball with like few legs. So or the daddy long leg, they call it, I think. Uh, it's a little tiny body and big, long, you know, inch and a half long Yeah, legs. so these ones I think are, are kind of like, okay, but like there's this, like spiders that have like real proper muscle, yeah, like mass on their legs, and they're like all hairy and stuff. Like this is just crazy. I don't know. <laughs> I can't really do that. Um, yeah, probably no. the same way. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And this last question, I'm I'm bringing back from uh, from the last podcast that Tammy and I uh, did together. Uh, it it started off as star trek or star wars but i'm gonna i'm gonna add to it because we had a couple of guests who who extended the question so the question is now star wars star trek doctor who or babylon 5 i see what you're doing there um i i think i have to go with voyager <laughs> okay. Can I, can I, what, can we're I calling it Voy now, by the way. It's called Voy now. <laughs> okay. On, I don't know if you watch the Lower Decks, the Star Trek Lower Decks, no. the new animated one. <laughs> so they, the the Lower Decks people, they're the the starters of the show, and they they call it Voy. I was on Voy, or I watched this. I heard about this on Voy. So okay, it's no longer Voyager. <laughs> it's Voy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is my favorite one. Um, I like that there's a there's a female captain that she's strong. Um, there's there's very many. I mean, like it's I mean it's Star Trek, so it's also kind of like a bit of a fancy, fantasy world and stuff. But like there's also a lot of interesting, like very like, personal stories and things like this. I re- uh, this one I really like. Um, I, I'm not so much into like car chases and like yeah, cop shows acc- yeah, yeah. accordingly like starship chases and stuff like this so i really like this one yeah. cool cool you know i don't know if you know jean mcdonald but she does a a, a podcast where she's uh talks about voyager oh, really? and okay. she's actually done um like a, a web page where she's got the different episodes of voyager and for people who've never seen them before she's got a very short synopsis of what the story is about and whether you should watch it or skip it <laughs> I, can, I can see how this can be very useful and then the, you know the the one one of the controversial episodes that people sort of go on one side or the other is the tuvix episode where to um uh what's the name of the vulcan guy um neelix and um oh yeah okay uh, uh, the tim russ character they end up in the they end up in a transporter accident and they get merged into one being called tuvix okay. And, oh. the, and then the question is, you know, when they figure out how to unsolve this, are you know they're they're going to go back to having Neelix and and Tuvok is the name of the yeah the yeah Tuvok yeah. What happens to Tuvix? What is what? It's like data. The question about data is data a real, you know, sentient mm. being or not? You know, uh, or is he just a machine and can we take him apart and examine him? You know, or like so yeah. the idea is what happens to this third entity that they've created in the transporter, like he has to go away for Tuvix and sort of Neelix and Tuvok to, to have their life back. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, interesting, um, interesting sort of, you know, that's very similar to the original Star Trek used to be, had these sort of questions that were basically, you know, one guy's or black on one side, white on the other side and the other guy, but you know, can you see the difference? They're, they're black and white on the opposite sides, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. they're not the same, you know, and and you know the thing is that like for us right now it looks like it's like almost almost like abstract questions that like were, are just there for our entertainment but like one day it could be like real problems exactly yeah. like with with like two weeks like um, if we do have the transporters yeah it, we're gonna have problems like this sooner or later yeah so. yeah exactly yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, it's so. it's like you know, like there's the there's the, you know they always play with this thing in the earlier versions of Star Trek where they have transporter accidents. You know, like somebody yeah. gets the transporter is not ready or it's malfunctioning, and they end up you know killing people in the transporter. And that's a very similar kind of question that we have today with self-driving cars, right? You see, it's the 
you know, the trolley, trolley test, you know, the, here's yeah, the trolley yeah. test. So it's like the trolley test, like, you know, what, neither one of them is the right way to go, but which one do you go? And so in an accident involving a self-driving car, who is responsible, the person who was sitting in the car, the manufacturer of the car or the software developer who wrote the code yeah. that determined yeah. whether to apply the brake or not, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, and, and, and like, say at the, at the time, at the time of the, um, like Asimov or Philip K. Dick were writing their stories like 50 years ago or so, like even more now, yeah. uh, like these kind of things seemed, seemed like abstract questions, like that, that are like written down in the story for our entertainment. But like right now they're like becoming real, 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 um, as, yeah. as, uh, electric cars are and actually self-driving cars are going to be more and more like uh, sooner or later a thing of, of our day-to-day so mm. yeah I, like i was saying before i was you know, the zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance I'm, I'm reading this book and uh what's interesting is you know, it's written in the 80s i think right and no cell phone right? No, mm-hmm. no Google maps, you know, no, like no YouTube where like, cause he's talking about the whole art of, do you, do you need to enjoy, to enjoy a, a road trip on a motorcycle? Do you need to know a good mechanic or do you need to know how to fix the problems yourself as they come up? Right. And that's one of the sort of debates early in the book. And I'm thinking, you know, like people, like, how, you know, people who've never dialed a telephone don't know the challenges you had, you know, if, if you didn't know the number, <laughs> yeah. right. Or people weren't home to answer the call, right. Or you had to dial and go all the way around with a nine and you made a mistake oh, yeah. and you had to start over again and, you know, get that <laughs> nine again. <laughs> all these yeah. problems that, you know, we don't have anymore now that we can say, Hey Siri, call. Oh, sorry, Siri. Don't, don't answer me. <laughs> It's funny, you know, I have a, I have a uh, HomePod in front of my t- TV because I have an Apple TV and I use the HomePod as the speaker for the Apple TV. Mm-hmm. But when I'm watching regular television, somebody says something. Every now and then my, my HomePod will respond. Yeah, very, yeah. Very yeah. Mine, does, mine does that too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been just watching like um, beginning to end 30 Rock. Yeah, and, okay. And one of the characters um, in the office, she's called Siri. Oh, oh right. and and the home pod is like blinking like all the time all the time <laughs> here at my desk. <laughs> nice. Um but the thing is, you know, like it it, it blinks, so it re- does recognize its name, but like ultimately decides like not to speak back. So right. like there's some kind of like process going on. Um and then like the point sees, well, this is not really a question. So uh I think I well, better just it's funny because we have so I have a home pod here in the basement. I have like I bought the big ones, you know, when they when they announced yeah. that they weren't gonna sell them anymore. I bought one I bought a refurbished one first and I bought a second one because I like we had one in the kitchen, we put one in down here. I bought a third one. And then we my wife and I both have Apple watches and mm-hmm. uh, she's constantly cooking and now she uses, you know, the home pod as a timer. Yeah. So she'll say, Hey, followed by the word Siri set a timer for 10 minutes. And the thing is like, you know, if you turn your wrist in a certain way, your Siri will pay attention to you. Right. So this, our, our Siri is confused as to which device we're talking to. It's very, it's very intelligent (laughs) because it generally knows that the, like, if you ask for it to play a radio station, it it knows to, to do it on the home pod. That's most, or the home pod because it's the most capable device for doing that. Right. Mm. But it's obviously confused between, you know, m- mind you, now you can, you can direct it and say, play it everywhere, play it in the office, play it in the basement, you know, and, and yeah. as long as your home pod has a name, you know, it knows where to play it. Cause often she'll say something to my home pod in the kitchen and my, <laughs> there's a, you know, the kitchen's just up the stairs right over here. Right. And the one in the basement will respond to her, not the one upstairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is, I see what <laughs> that, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, all these man. interesting things I, and you know it's it's you know, it's funny when you think about it like these are the things that these are the edge cases that you know we are, as developers don't think about we're writing a perfect happy path application you know 
And we don't consider, well, what if somebody has 12 HomePods in a row? And I've often wondered, I have a Google Home next to my HomePod and I have an Alexa upstairs. I want, I often want, one of these days I want to try and get them to talk to each other (laughs) (laughs) and see where the conversation goes, right? (laughs) They'll all say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. (laughs) Uh, No, no, I have the, I have the mini, the mini HomePod. um, Yeah. And I find it like, I find the, the, we, so we do have like two work rooms in the apartment and one is my, and one is my wife's work mm. room. And we had like each got like a mini for our desks, but, uh, yeah. um, which is great because like you can easily play, um, music on like for both ends of the apartment yes. yeah. and like state, like if you go to the, to the kitchen, yeah. um, which is it kind of like in the middle, you have a, like a surround, like from everywhere. It yes. From yes. Everywhere. So yep. It's and it, it can like, also follow you through the house too, which I've heard too. Yeah. But I, but I really find it like great to like pair them on, on the desk. On oh yeah. That's amazing that's sound, really, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really like, I find the big ones like, they sound great on, on their own. Mm. Uh, and this little ones on their own, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sold on them, but like when you have the two in front of you, like on a, a like about a stereo a pair, meter yeah. and a half, two, two meters away. Yeah. yeah. Then, then I really like it. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. Well, like I, I took my, I took two of the big home pods, put them in the kitchen when I first got them and I, and I made them a stereo pair. And then I played the new, new mix of the, of the Beatles Abbey road amazing sound yeah. like just yeah. phenomenal you know i only have one in front of my apple tv now because it, it does apparently it does map to the room you know so you get mm, so yeah. it, it uses the walls to bounce you know sound and stuff like that which all of our tvs do that this day these days anyway but uh, my wife told me today she wants a mini for upstairs so i can bring one of the other home pods down here and have a stereo pair all the time which will be just great yeah yeah yeah, and I, I I didn't try to like. Do you know if if like a mini pairs with a with a with a home pot? Um, no, I don't think they do. No, no you can't. You okay. can't do. Uh, that's that's one thing. I know you can pair two minis. You can pair two mm. original home pods, but yeah, I don't think you can. My concern about the home pod and and was a little leery about buying these ones when they announced that they weren't going to have them anymore, is. Yeah. You know, when the software goes away, you know, I have my whole house is full of old, like old Mac stuff. So you can see them here and here, yeah. but you know, like those guys, they can't, they don't understand HTTPS. So they can't connect to the internet anymore. I do have a solution for that, but so they don't understand the internet anymore. So I can't, you know, and the one, the, the SE 30 doesn't have an ethernet yeah. port. So it, it really doesn't, you know, it's, it's an Island, right? Yeah. So my concern is because we don't have an external port on the home pods that once, you know, Siri evolves beyond where uh, it can, it can run on there. What, ha- what do these become, you know, landfill, you know, that said, I'm sure someone will figure out how to, how to put an audio jack on them so you can use them as a nice speaker. <laughs> yeah, probably. probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, this was, this was great about, um, this was great about the, uh, what was it called? The airport? The, oh, the, the, air, the, the base station zones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because it was both like a Wi-Fi router. Uh, it, uh, you could like plug things that are USB in it. And then yeah. you could also plug like a speaker and it. it became yeah. like wireless speaker. Yeah. Airport I Express, I think really... it's called. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. It had the headphone, the microphone jack in the yeah, bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You could just plug in anything into it, and then became like um, a wireless speaker. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I think that's the evolution of where where HomePod comes from, right? So, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool. Oh. I, I'm a big fan of Apple TV. I, I take it you have Apple TV as well, and yeah, the, yeah. The app I, or I the device, have, or um, I have the device here. I think the the first 4K mm-hmm. was it. I don't know. I haven't used it in a while. Um, yeah, we don't we don't have a TV in here. Okay. Uh, in this apartment, we never had in this apartment, so uh, uh, it's been sitting like I think for a couple of years. In the, hmm. in the, yeah, uh, we have three of them because we're still we're still bound to cable, and I'm trying to break my wife by having more Apple TVs available to her. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. But yeah, no, I have I have the 4K down here, and we I have the original Apple Developer Kit one the the one dollar. You know, the, mm-hmm. when they first rolled out, I have that one upstairs, and yeah, 
So, and now we have another entertainment space upstairs that we use. So yeah, the mm -hmm. house is full of Apple devices and I'm waiting for all the home kit stuff to connect because I have a nest door cam. Cause I kept miss I'm in the basement right now and I, I keep missing shipments because the guy comes to the yeah. door and he taps really quietly, you know, okay. now there's a doorbell he has to ring. And then the Google home pod tells me there's someone at the door, you know, nice. so that's nice. Yeah. So I have the Google stuff. I have the Alexa stuff. And yeah, I just, I wish I'm waiting for the day when they all speak the same language, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I put, I put, uh, I put, I run, I run, uh, I run Homebridge on my, uh, my, I have a mini server down behind me. I run Homebridge on it and Homebridge lets your Google stuff talk to HomeKit. I see. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Okay. Um, no, nah, I, I didn't really try all of these. Like the, I, I think I'm more. I don't have so many devices. Like I, I'm always afraid to buy more things yeah. because I, I moved so many times that I'm just yeah. very wary every time that <laughs> buying anything. But um, but th this is one of the reasons actually that I'm, that I'm trying to really stick to Apple products because right. they hold fairly long yeah, like, compared yeah. to other electronics that I have. Um, mm. Like I still have my blue um, 5C phone and it, and it works just fine. Yeah. Um, it's just that it doesn't hold um, for so long. Uh, it's charged, <laughs> but that's pretty much it. So I, I was um, playing with this the other day. This is my... Oh yeah, iPhone 3GS. It was dead for a while. Okay. There it is. But but I just just realized that it's working now. All of a sudden, here we, yeah. you don't want to see my password. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, so I used to use, I used to keep this in the bathroom just so I could check the weather and things like that. You know, but yeah, yeah. it's nice. Yeah, it's they're, they're really. Um, and here is the here on my desk. I have the 2017 iPad, mm. um, which now my daughter uses actively is that a pro um, so or it, regular no 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 just um just a run the mill like yeah yeah and she uses it mostly for netflix so yeah you know but there, yeah, she pig. also uses like a bunch of apps and so forth and it's and it's just perfect like it works it does everything um uh and, and it and it and it um and it's surviving like really heavy use like yeah <laughs> no, heavy, no. i mean like fist fights and stuff well i'm, I'm surprised that you don't like we put uh we put my wife's ipad in uh one of those griffin cases with the plastic yeah, it's got yeah. a plastic yeah. screen on the front and it, and it's you know it's, you can almost shoot a bullet at it and it would still survive you know and waterproof because okay. when the kids when the grandkids were growing up we, you know like you were always passing them a device in the back seat of the car and mm -hmm. you know like my my original apple i have an a, a iphone one that i brought back from from san francisco to use because they weren't available in canada right yeah. but the kids broke the home button because they used it so much mm -hmm. when they were playing games and stuff right so yeah <laughs> yeah and so you know we we <laughs> we try to protect the the devices because you know i've seen some some uh, unfortunate accidents happen some of these devices right right yeah right well, it's been great having you on the show. We should wrap up and then we can oh, yeah, yeah, talk definitely. some more as well. I think we but... went like a bit over time. Probably. Well, there is no time. What is time? Time is relative, <laughs> right? So, um, so hey, thanks, for Martin, Martin, for being on the show. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they find you? Uh, underplot.com. That's underplot as the word, dot com. Cool. All right. And uh, as usual, my name is Timitra, uh, T-I-M-M-I-T-R-A on the Twitter machines where you'll find me. And then uh, Mike is going to start doing the outro while Marin and I laugh and joke and take, say secret stuff. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> this has been another episode of the More Than Just Code podcast. If you want to find out more about the show, you can visit the More Than Just Code website at mtjc.fireside.fm. There you can find a summary and show notes of each episode. We list links to the apps, code, and news that we mentioned on the show. If you like the podcast, tell your friends, leave a comment on the website, or write a review on iTunes. And please recommend us in your favorite podcatcher. All of these things help others find out about the show. We really appreciate your help with spreading the word. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you, so use the hashtag AskMTJC and we may mention you on the show. 
Friends of the show can also join us on the podcast Slack channel. Once again, the podcast Twitter account is at MTJC underscore podcast. Please consider supporting the show by pledging any amount on patreon.com slash MTJC. Every dollar pledged helps a lot. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Cool. Okay. And that's the end of the show, as it were. Nice. Um, I- I'm still amazed that we both showed up with 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 the t-shirts. Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. When, yeah. Is, is, there, the... is there a recent one or? Um, I don't know. It's no. It's just it's just the dark side. And yeah, um, I bought it f- the last time I was in Cupertino. I bought it from from um, what is it called? Target. Um, I was just I was just looking for some some clothes for my daughter and there was like a big pile of of t-shirts of like yeah. rock bands and yeah, yeah, like, yeah. okay here it is. <laughs> oh this is at Target. It was at Target, yeah. Yeah, I bought a I bought a Star Wars one in Target. We were in Hawaii last uh, 2019 and and yeah, there was a nice Star Wars one I bought there. This one I got off the internet off of Facebook. It's a, it's wish you okay. were here. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you <laughs> wish you were here. Yeah, yeah. Which again was another seminal album for me too, right? So because it came out when I was in grade eleven, I think grade ten, maybe. Yeah. So I used to listen to Dark Side of the Moon under underneath my my sister would play it in her bedroom, and I would sit by the door and listen to it. Oh wow! Yeah. So yeah, Dark Side is uh, another one too. Have you ever? Do you ever get a chance to see Pink Floyd? Or um, no, I don't think so. Um, no, I'm not really. I I. I amusingly i don't really feel very comfortable at like big crowds right so concerts have never really been like my thing much Your thing, yeah yeah i've been to like a few but it's quite comfortable i'm more into this like live music like at bars and things like this right. where there's Smaller like a place. crowd yeah. that like in in one minute go outside take a take a little bit of fresh air and then come back in uh, this yeah yeah kind of like my thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, cool. And I've have seen... you been in any nice art galleries recently? I guess, well, I guess not, right? But I was time. actually, I huh? was, yeah, I was. Where'd you go? Um, I was two days in Vienna. Actually, it was two days in oh, Prague nice. and then two days in Vienna. Um, like it's from here to Prague is about three hours and a half drive, and then mm. from Prague to Vienna is another three. Uh, and a half or so um so i did go in summer and um i've seen um i've seen uh there was a show of a very like a, a female austrian artist who paints like amazing things um about displaced women mm. um super powerful so i, I did see a few nice things, I must say. Uh, and I met Peter Steinberger in Vienna. Um, you know, the PSPDF kit. Um, oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, cool. Founder. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he, he's he's in Vienna. And uh, yeah, I just like run on Twitter and then we met up and uh, it's nice. Cool, it yeah. was nice. It was nice, you know, like it was so good, like for a few days to just, um drive around like meet a couple of people um feel a bit more normal (laughs) yeah well i mean that's the cool thing about about europe i mean uh for me europe is a big adventure right to try and go over there and see stuff i mean the close i have to go to new york or i have to go to you know to galleries here and around or when wait for the shows to come to me right like there's a picasso blue period uh show at the at the art gallery of ontario coming up and my wife and I were talking like do we still have a membership we don't know anymore right like what happened in the pandemic right um but you know and then you know I go to I like to go to MoMA in uh, New York City like I went Mm. to an Apple event in uh, 2017 I think and I and I I landed got off the plane went to MoMA I had an hour to run through (laughs) the whole gallery and see all the pieces right 
Um, and then I felt like one of those, those people at, uh, at the, the Louvre in Paris who run through from one place to the other, they don't sit there and enjoy the painting. Right. So, yeah. but I kind of had to do that. And then, uh, I, I, they finally reopened the last time I was in San Francisco, uh, they opened the, uh, gallery downtown you know we used to go to wwc and the gallery was always under construction yeah uh, sf moma right mm-hmm. um so, yeah, so i got to go in there last time i was i was in uh in there and then, then i went to a museum and when we went to our Dev- devcon there was a nice museum in dc that we went to so i don't know if you were I don't know That's if you true. did you go to the last couple of WWDCs? I can't remember. I mean, not w, RW, RWDC. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did go to 2018, I think it was. Yeah. That was so the last was, one, right? I think it was the last. Yeah, that's true. It was the last one. It's only yeah. been three. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been to the last one. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> Right. So, yeah, it's really funny. Like now I'm just wrapping up with the book. I think uh, next week should be really completely finished. And then the week after, if nothing goes wrong, I will go out. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited like to, to not look for a job for a couple of months. And, yeah. and uh, I, I have this, I've been obsessed with this idea to create like a swift IDE Hmm. Um, so, uh, so I'm, I think I'm going to give this a try, uh, but like, I'm going to give you like the one minute pitch and you just sure. tell me yes, no, just like as a first reaction. So, okay. um, so have you been in the situation where you're putting like all your effort into learning Swift and building iOS apps, and Mac apps and so forth. And that works great with Xcode and so forth. But like, as soon as you need to do an automated task, or to like do anything else, like, um, you know, stitching some JSONs together or like maybe processing some images, then you have to go to like a bash scripting Ruby and so forth and so forth. Right. Right. So what I want to build is like an IDE that helps you write scripts in Swift really easily. Oh, nice. Like yeah. as easy as opening a new file, writing the script, running, that's it. So is this like a, like the idea behind Apple script kind of idea? I mean, like that's an example that like I got into this stuff through things like uh, Final Cut Pro, or not Final Cut Pro, FileMaker Pro had a sort of a very simple, uh, uh, HyperCard was another example where, you, you know, they put together the pieces and you would just put these pieces together and cut, and it would do a thing, right? Um, yeah. So we used to use Apple Script in, in print production when I was working in, in prepress. And then um, that led me to, you know, things like learning PHP and things like that, right? So... Yeah, I, you know, I, I often joke that there should be a Photoshop, like uh, Adobe's going to come up with iOS developer 1.0, you know, kind of app, <laughs> iOS creator, you know, <laughs> and I trademarked the name Adobe, don't steal it from me. But, no, you know, they, they, you know, that, that, and this is kind of what I think Swift UI is in a sense, you know, like it's, you know, you can, you don't need to know all the craziness that we had in Objective-C to basically build a, uh, yeah, you know, no, no. build something, right? So Swift UI to me is is kind of that same sort of idea. Yeah. So I think that, and you're right. Like if I need to do any kind of text processing or anything you know, like outside of I was developer, right? Yeah, I would go write a a, 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 a script that run on you know awk or something like that. Or yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think a lot of people are open to the idea of of, of scripting, like server yeah. side, if you want to call it that. Not it's not hosting. It's Running, yeah, so, running so, Swift on your, your Mac, right? And, and and the problem is that like you can you can do this with Xcode, but like the thing is you need to like create a new project, yes. um, set up all the like the uh, input parsing, output parsing, whatever, importing all the libraries and so forth and so forth. So I'm really thinking about something that like does all of this automatically for you. And the only thing you need to do is just like open a new file and say like uh, read all the files in this in this directory, and if they're images, you know, like resize them or something like this, which mm. is like the ten lines of code that you actually want to write, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. not like all the setup, all the projects, and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking about like something like this, like just to transfer all your skill, well, all your Swift skills that you have for iOS development into like something else you can do on your computer. Yeah, um, eventually. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's so, similar, similar idea. Like I, when I, again, coming back to what I started yeah. with, like, and this is, 
this is what I, what I knew is like, you know, I started doing PHP because I, somebody had a, ho- a hockey pool and they needed to, uh, I said to them, why don't you do it on a computer? And they said, well, why don't you do it on the computer? And they handed me the, the list. Right. And yeah. so we, I basically start, I learned how to write PHP to, to create the pool, to display mm-hmm. a table of information for people and then to have then created something for them to select the teams that they're going to put together. And then, then I had to write a script that would go to you, to Yahoo, scrape the fantasy pool information, Mm -hmm. convert it, strip it all out of HTML or whatever format it was in, and then insert it into a MySQL database. And then that's what generated the table that you looked at to see how your pool, your team was doing today. Right. And then, um, I did a similar thing with, with, uh, I just forgotten what it was, but there's, I had a similar kind of task that I had to do the same thing. And, and so it sounds like you're saying the stuff that I would have to go to other languages to do on my Mac, like use my Unix skills to do, you're talking about doing this now in Swift, which is a language that theoretically you already know, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Or want to learn. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm really thinking about this and trying to, think about it like in a way that like how could it be like a sustainable product eventually um, mm. yeah. cool <laughs> yeah all right all right my okay. friend this, this has uh, been amazing i love this uh, so so much